what Apple did was to make it extremely affordable for people. So it starts a whole new shift. This is my son. My son is on crutches, he's on wheelchair, right? But today, the way he learns, Royal Crash, some of you know this thing, right? It's really, everything is Google. Everything is wiki. I, my father told me this thing is, my father said, one of the best things that you should invest in is buying books. So if you come to my house, I invite you to, right? My wife hides all my books, but basically all the shelves have hidden shelves because all my books are in there. I have encyclopedias that this thick shelf loads of them. But I've always thought I hand them to my son, it would be like treasure. <laughs> but you know, my son looks at it as if but then the pages are dropping. Yes, he doesn't fit them, he he turns the phone like that. It's all swiping. Ladies and gentlemen, even what we used to believe as timeless truth, how precious knowledge is the best form of inspiring people is true books. But go to any of the national libraries, see how many students, how many people that really touch the books, or are they just using the space to do their work? How many of them are on computers? How many of them are touching the books? In my time, Books used to be old and brown. Today, all the books there are all so new. But I would say, how many people really borrow real hard copy books? It becomes a dying trade if we are not able to change the paradigm. Right? It may stabilize, but we always need to plan for the new, for the next trajectory. And this is what I do very often with companies. How do we redesign our products? How do we actually look into the future? Right? And it help people to look at things differently. What might change some of these dynamics? I'm doing this work because you say, John, your basic degree is zoology. Right? But today you're teaching curriculum design. And, and you're helping companies to do innovation work. I, I love innovation. When I, when I did my master's, I was asked to do master's in education. But I said, I've always wanted to know what innovation really is, even though I've been studying about creativity, and I did my master's in creativity. I'm thankful for that because when I did my master's in creativity, I used how innovation happens in business places. I use the concepts and I bring it back into education. And one of the things I realized and I'm very worried all these years is education is always catching up with the world out there. Please let me say this again. Education is always catching up with the world out there. We are seeing what's trendy, what's to come, what is imperative for economic survival, and we catch up. We design modules, we design new electives to meet their future needs. But ladies and gentlemen, if you have done curriculum design work, you know from designing from policy level to implementation to understanding the impact to looking at evaluation, that takes a lot of time. It's not just a cycle that can be completed in one year. You pilot, it takes minimum of three years to stabilize a good module. And to say this is a good module, this is gonna be a, something that people will take it, this will, you know, we have to train people to look at that. What I'm saying in, in my work is we have moved beyond just the tacit knowledge in curriculum design work. Very often these are the tools that I use with clients, with companies to say, how do we go about designing some of uh, the way that, how do we design, for example, one of the innovation projects that I was involved in in Denmark was designing a future car. There was a team of 14 of us, I was paired up with a Mexican uh, cartoonist. But what we do every evening from 5 p.m. to 10 p.m. is to sit down to meet, to design that future car. And that was about seven years ago. And what is difficult that we can do from here to here between explicit to tacit knowledge is understanding the future. What we don't know yet, it's very hard to design, especially today with full car. So I know that still future drives how poly needs to become even more relevant, how NP needs to reposition ourselves to speak the language, to meet, to drive, to draw in, to attract new students. Right? We know CET is on our plate, we know that change is necessary. But ladies and gentlemen, while it says that you know we, we are driven very much by education, is it just still this future of CET? Is there more to this? 
And I'm, I'm, I'm speaking to you today as a curriculum person. And how might we re-envision curriculum design in terms of interdisciplinary studies? This is a very old study, done in the 80s, uh, written as a journal report. Um, but I want to highlight two things, complex communication and expert thinking. Today, we think that knowledge is powerful still. Today, students go to Wiki, Google for all the information. Assessments become increasingly irrelevant because we can actually buy more and more things online. The question now is, I think, and I want to challenge you to challenge me back, I think knowledge is cheapening. In the 80s, 90s, we're saying we need to develop knowledge workers. We can't depend on the typical routine work. We can't depend on manual work. We need to help people to have complex communication, expert thinking. And this is where IS is beautifully positioning a position to highlight some of these learning. But look at what, uh, again, this piece of study, look at what business employers want as compared to what the superintendents of the US says. What is the 21st century ready workforce? And you realize some of these are different. Right. Of course, as a researcher, I would say, hey, ability to identify new patterns, right, two, three. But look at number one, problem identification or articulation. The business employer says this is number one. School superintendent ranked it number nine. Look at that. Problem solving, employers, business people, ranked it number but today, we are still saying problem solving is number one. 21st century models are not new. And US engage, E-N-G-A-U-E, Partnership for 21st Century, and several other organizations have already been talking about problem solving since the 80s. Right? We think that we need to be able to problem solve and we consider this as a complex or, or higher order capacity, a capability. But if I just look at point number one, problem identification or articulation, this is my PhD research in problem finding. I help clients, I help companies, I help schools to problem solve. But my PhD research looks at problem finding problem construction, problem definition, how do new problems come about. Ladies and gentlemen, I will tell you one thing. Today, if you watch the television, right, the, the parenting talks and all that, what Media Call is saying is, right, in 30 years' time, half the jobs will all be gone, right? Can I ask you, where are the new jobs coming from? Where might all the new jobs be coming from? If they are gone, where will the new jobs be coming from? PM, ETs, we are concerned. Is our rice bowl. But where are the new jobs coming from? It is coming from the young entrepreneurs who are designing new things, new products, new ways of engagement. Because they are more savvy in technology. Those who are able to make a mark in this world can create products that will change people's behavior. And in a few years' time, today we're looking at accessibility, ease of buying things, for example, red market. But is ease of accessibility always the number one consideration? What else will change the way that people interact, behave in the future? I'm concerned because ability to find better problems, to design better problems, Ability to construct new ways of solution, of changing people's behavior, is the way forward. Particularly because today globalization and technology is making the world so flat, everything becomes so easy. But everything becomes also very cheapened. It's easy to score, for example, right? If I'm against a particular president, his thinking, his thoughts, all right, I can back mention, but ladies and gentlemen, we know credibility still is a timeless it's not about how vocal you are on Facebook, how many beautiful pictures that you post yourself on Instagram, that matters. Employers don't look at that. They just show a profile of you. But it doesn't show who you are 
or what capabilities you have. And this is where I am asking IS to look more deeply into our modules. What kind of students are we producing? When they finish your module, how certain are you that they have been different from before they start taking your classes? What new thinking are they able to bring into the world? And I'm talking about employability, right? Yes, we are very much driven by the economic grip. It's an imperative for us because Singapore itself strives on that, right? Go King Street's way of redesigning the whole Singapore. Look at Woodlands today. It is all prime for that. But the question is, are we ready for the next lap? This came out on 6th of February. He says, race with machines, not against them. Right? And MIT says this, we, we become scared of technology. Like it or not, with age, we become scared of, I, I may claim that I look 23, but I'm scared of the way that my son depends on his phone, that his hand cannot leave the phone. Right? Every time he finishes an assignment, next thing he goes to is a phone, it's no longer a book. When he was much younger, I loved bringing him to libraries, I loved sitting with him in libraries for days and days. Right? I love my daughter making things. But today they're just playing games, buying things, chatting, whatsapping. If you look at your kids, I don't know how many of you have checked your kids' phone. I look at my daughter P4. Do you know how many WhatsApp groups she has? <laughs> to me, having two WhatsApp groups already, I find it very irritating. <laughs> right? you, you post something and everybody starts replying. It becomes just disturbing. But you look at your children, how many WhatsApp groups they have? They are so comfortable with that. They feel funny when they don't hear a big sound. They feel weird. Is, some, they, 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 is my phone off? Huh? Is my mobile data off? Dad, did you cut off my phone? We, we, we are asked today not just to be comfortable, but to deal with it. But ladies and gentlemen, I want to highlight one of my key principles of sharing today. All that he says today that the education system needs to be overhauled, that the moment the system is turning out the kind of workers that still needed 50 years ago. This is a Straight Times article in Business Times. We are training people to be good at things where machines are better. We just make this thing. We need intellectually curious people. We need problems of Google creatively self-direction. But I want to highlight this. We need to learn how to educate and train people to be intellectually flexible to be able to shift over time as requirements shift. Let me unpack these two words. What does it mean to be intellectually flexible? You need, in my field of research, in creativity, you need to have knowledge to be able to innovate. You need to know your things before I can design better things. But very often, we become fixated Right? There's a term called cognitive fixation. It becomes fixated with it. Sometimes the better we become, the less open we are to learning, of changing. And that's where IS comes in, your brilliance of helping students to look at the content that they learn and say, how do we make it truly interdisciplinary? Two main things that I, I, I want you to remember, you know, number one, Fluency, number two, flexibility. I, I, I told Don actually, I, because of the three conversations that I had, I designed a framework for you guys. I, I know you have a framework coming up, but from a curriculum design framework, I have three words for you, three, three big points for you. And I start first from content. In order for me to design that kind of flexible thinking, right, for students to be fluent in generating better ideas, to be convicted, to be clear, and I have looked at some of your assessment rubrics, I would say beautiful work, right? That you look at students' ability to critique, you look at students' ability to analyze, right? You look at them reasoning through. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm saying these effective dimensions are very important. If you go to Google, if you just Google and look for some of the disruptive innovation, type the word economics, type the word disruptive. I'll tell you, sometimes when people are so stuck in a certain way, from an economical way of thinking, from the discipline of economics, I can change and destroy the world in no time. 
If our students today don't have good grounding in ethical reasoning, if they don't start to consider how various things impact or imply other changes, we are done. Now, let me first introduce from the discipline dimension, knowledge dimension, and I use this two words, connected knowledge. Right? Again, let me say this, IS, interdisciplinary studies, is not new. It has been in the research since the 60s. DRJ has written quite a bit of it, right? And, but today I would say, in my framework, the three points, point two and point three, shifts it a bit more. But as I look at your uh, curriculum, I want to highlight some of these things that I think is something that is worth for us to re-examine in your modules as well. Right? Number one, um, and this is not really here, but in a lot of secondary schools and primary schools, some of the misconceptions of interdisciplinary studies is this. Number one, a lot of people, a lot of teachers, especially in the uh, advance of project work, right? project work in schools, and you know in primary schools, 25% of P4, P5, P6 uh, work, should, time should be spent, curriculum time on project work. Project work is also stipulated also in uh, lower side, all right, until set three. A-level project work is a national exam, constitutes 10% to uni. But a lot of teachers have misconception around project work. Sometimes in the beginning, they look at mixing and matching various activities. So what can English language do? Communication. So do a poster presentation. A poster presentation, art teacher comment. How do you design a good art? It is not a mix and match of learning activities. That is not ideas. Because you are just putting things together. Very often, even, I want to ask this to you as well. At the end of your course, do you expect your students, with all the learning in their head, to be able to explicitly say that I can think interdisciplinary? Or are they making sense of it all by themselves? Just because I've gone through the activity doesn't mean that the thinking becomes explicit. I worry also because point number two, sometimes we think of it as dumping down of, or collapsing of content. Right? And I see that and I worry, I'm not sure if that modules, modular system looks at that tiering, year one, year two, year three. Who decides what is basic knowledge? Who decides for them what is advanced knowledge? I want to say this because some school says this is differentiated instruction, and I worry because differentiated instruction is not just differentiating in terms of process, tools, or, or knowledge level. Right. It's not dumping down of content. <laughs> Three, some of your courses, right, um, and, and beautiful work in terms of designing how you merge some of the process tools from business and look at current affairs, how do you look at some of these issues together right, from different disciplines. But the question is, what is the content that requires the use of the tools for them to draw that out? What is the content, where is the disciplinary, where is the way, the methodology of looking at that? So tools are great, but the use of tools alone is not enough. I can teach students a lot of business tools for them to do a good piece of analysis work. But if they cannot synthesize for themselves, the interdisciplinarity is lost. Right? I think and I believe in a lot of your modules, you introduce a lot of powerful tools for them. Question is, can they do their own synthesis? And more importantly, can they generalize and use the tools in a different context? The context needs to be meaningful to them and no longer designed by us. One of the things that I question, and I, as I look at some of your modules and the way that you design is, are we truly interdisciplinary or are we multidisciplinary? When disciplines don't talk, when they are still in silos and we expect students to bridge, to blend, to melt it, it will not. I can teach a lot of content, and we look at content, facts, information, and I'll share with you why concept-based may change this. But concepts need to allow different disciplines to talk, right? So I'm not even going to transdisciplinary thinking, because that requires a concoction of something different. If we can do good interdisciplinary skills, well-designed in our curriculum, I think our students will benefit. 